There we go. So we're going to look at four different uh, topics or different areas uh, today. Uh, the first one being air quality. Air quality is it's one of the uh, most important things as far as to ensure that you do have a good quality product go to the plant. So we're going to look at ways of how you can achieve that. We'll look at a couple of different parameters to uh, to try and shoot for or goals to meet. Your environment or for, you know, for the turkey is there inside the barn. Uh, you want to make sure that it's it's adequate. You want to make sure it's dry. You want to make sure it, it stays clean or as clean as possible. So uh, we're going to talk about some different uh, aspects on that as well. And then uh, lastly, we're going to look at feeding, and then we're going to look at watering, which watering is also obviously the most important piece of the puzzle. But we're going to uh, talk about ways to ensure that you have a good quality product there for the for the turkeys to eat and drink on. So there again, so they make their weight gains and they are a, a good quality product to send to the so Air quality being the first thing, you know, temperature, you know, the actual house temperature. You know, most of that most of the time that's going to be set by your integrator or by your supplier of, of your poles so uh, I would obviously encourage you to, uh, to to reference those guys as guides as target points but more importantly what we're going to uh, talk about is just uh, ways that you can achieve those temperatures whether it be you know making sure you have enough heat during the winter time or making sure that you have enough enough air movement during the summertime uh, as far as starting poults off, you know, you want to make sure that you got good dry flooring or, or a good dry bedding, but you also, as far as your key points to look at are like carbon dioxide, you know, the level that you want that to be, which is less than 5,000 parts per million. You want to make sure that you've got uh, your ammonia levels are less than 30 parts per million. Uh, and you want to make sure that your relative humidity in the house is 60 to 70 percent and that's not only for starting poles out but you want to maintain that just as just as closely as you possibly can throughout the whole flock uh, obviously if that number starts going north on you then you're going to start seeing wet floors even if even if it's just going to walmart or or any of your local hardware stores and buying just a cheap 10 15 uh humidity gauge to keep there in the house just to monitor that that is that is huge so, uh, so certainly, uh, certainly want to keep that environment nice and dry as possible, so that way you have a good quality product and you you reduce your salmonella load if you do that as well. So, first thing we're going to look at is ventilation. Obviously, to have have great air quality, you're going to have to have good ventilation. So, a couple of different uh, scenarios here, or different methods, I should say. Uh, you got your natural ventilation, and then you've got your power ventilation. Uh, you know, natural ventilation is something that can be used, uh, you know, during your cooler times of the year, I like to say, not cold, but cooler, such as fall, spring, uh, maybe early in the morning if you're uh, more in the northern part of the U.S., uh, but, um, but that's something that is, it, it allows some of the positives for natural ventilation is, is it obviously is, 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 is cheaper to operate that way because you don't, you aren't running fans, uh, you you have your curtains down, you got the nice breeze blowing through there, uh, keeping the birds cool, keeping them comfortable. Uh, so if your fans aren't running, that means your maintenance is going to be down as far as your act, as far as having to do maintenance. To monitor, which leads me into some of the disadvantages. You know, you've got to really stay on top of your natural ventilating. You got to make sure that you are there when the, when the weather changes, or if you have it set up to a controller, you want to make sure that the controller is set properly. So you you can adjust uh, you can adjust that curtain or switch to power ventilating if that is an option for you. Uh, so that way you can uh, keep the birds comfortable. So again, they they are a good quality product. Uh, you know, obviously if the curtains are down, some more disadvantages there. If if it rains or snows, any any precipitation outside, just bad weather. Uh, that's going to obviously uh, blow inside the house. You know, obviously potentially getting the getting the bedding wet. So that's something that you want to want to keep an eye on. So all of it is you've got to manage it more closely. So whereas power ventilation or, you know, uh, as far as just combining both ventilations, and I, I, and I just like to call that transitional ventilation. So whether you're transitioning from natural to power or power back to natural, depending on what the house temperature is doing, uh, you want to make sure all that's set correctly. You want to make sure as far as the controller goes. And so you want to make sure that that whole transition is nice and smooth because turkeys don't like 
don't like sudden change. And so anything you want to make that that change just as sudden, just as subtle as possible. So, um, you know, like I touched on a while ago, you know, that's all going to be weather permitted if it's uh, as far as doing natural over power ventilating. Obviously, if it's as warm as it has been being, uh, you're going to be doing a whole lot more power ventilating or full tunnel mode than you are natural. So now we're going to, so that's kind of just a brief overview of some, you know, obviously targets to meet. And then obviously, uh, you know, different scenarios there from a ventilating standpoint. So now we're going to uh, talk about some different products that, that, that we here at Valco offer to help you achieve those goals. So first thing we're going to talk about is our fiberglass fan. Now we have three fans that we're going to touch on today. Actually, I'm going to touch on four. But, uh, but we have uh, just a few fans we're going to touch on today. Uh, and then obviously, if you have any questions about these, again, put it in the chat bar or uh, certainly get with your local uh, dealership or local Valco sales rep and we'll be able to be glad to, glad to help you out. So uh, fiberglass fans, you know, the biggest, uh, biggest plus for them is, is that your housing is not going to rust because it's fiberglass. Uh, you know, this picture here, as you can see, uh, it's got a nice poly cone there. So that's uh, that's going to help be more durable. It's going to help stand up against the elements outside. It's also going to bounce back if, let's say, you're outside and you're bush hogging up next to the house and your tire from your tractor accidentally bumps into the into the uh, cone. You're not going to bend it like you're going to bend a galvanized thing. And with all of our fans, you know, it's, it is 2021, so we do have the most modern motors uh, that, that, that will come installed with all of our fans. But uh, we, we, we've, we've kept up on the times there to make sure that we have the uh, best quality motor and best quality fan there, there on the market. We've got all different sizes with our fiberglass fan line. So, so again, it would be whatever size would fit your application. Next, we're going to look at our Z fan, which it's a galvanized fan that's gone through a proprietary uh, extra blend coating uh, that will help it last longer. And uh, and the biggest uh, the biggest key point here to point out is uh, is that with this fan you would get a seven year warranty. So uh, it's the most rust resistant material on the market. And um, and with that seven year warranty for the for the housing there, we if you know if anything was to come up down the line then uh, that would be something that you would obviously run back through your dealership and then we would uh, address it on a case-by-case -case basis. As far as size-wise, uh, you know, just like our fiberglass fan line, we do offer several different sizes there. And again, it all depends on what, you're, on what application you're looking for there. And then uh, our V-fan or our variable speed fan, you know, this is something that we brought to the market here, here about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe two years ago. Uh, Again, we have multiple different sizes with this with this line of fans. Uh, the biggest thing here to point out is, is that we get really high air movement at 100%, and then at 50%, we get we get great energy uh, savings as far as to um, as far as if that was something that you were looking for in a variable speed fan. Uh, we do offer a, a a single phase or three phase option, which is that way on all of our fans, and uh, we do have a. Uh, we do have the PMAC motor uh, with this uh, with, with this fan, um, and it's it actually comes with a variable frequency drive mounted to the fan uh, from you know from the manufacturer, which being us, and then we uh, and we we actually uh, actually spec it to your application. So uh, if you would like to see more on our V fan, we did a we did a presentation about a year ago, and it's out there on our Valco YouTube channel as well. So. I would encourage you to go watch that if you would. Uh, we get into some uh, Ben Carvel, who is uh, one of our app engineers, who gets into uh, really diving into um, the uh, the uh, different the different scenarios to run this fan in, as far as to maximize your return or your return on investment. Uh, so that's something that uh, that that uh, he touches on very well in that presentation. So I would encourage you to go go take a look at that if you're interested. And then the last thing on fans is that we do offer a line of our basket uh, basket stir fans. And we also offer a line of box stir fans, depending on you know size variation. We have a 54 inch box fan or a 36 inch box fan, and then we've got uh, we've got two different variations on, on sizes on basket fans as well. Uh, so so again, it all depends on your application and what you're 
trying to do, and most importantly, how much air you're trying to move. Next, we'll move into uh, our Atlas curtain machine. Just want to touch on this real briefly. Uh, you know, obviously, during the natural, as you're transitioning from natural into power ventilation, you're going to utilize, you want to have a nice curtain machine that, that uh, you can rely on. Our curtain machine is built for the elements. You know, it's, it's, it's built to be outside, to withstand the different elements outside, rain, uh, snow, heat. Um, it's also very strong. If you actually, if you go to our YouTube channel, there's actually a video there showing this, this exact curtain machine uh, raising up a, a tractor. So it's got a 4,000 pound uh, uh, lift capabilities. And so that's something uh, pretty cool to watch. But, uh, and then we have the built-in stops as far as to make sure that uh, as far as the limit setting, make sure that, the, that it doesn't go past and cause pasture limit, therefore causing pulleys to start pulling out of the wall. We don't want that to happen. So that's, we have our limits built in that those can be adjusted. And then also, again, we have the different sizes depending on what application you have there for your, uh, for your, uh, for your curtain opening size. So next we're going to switch into cooling. You know, if you got your fans running, if, if, if it's this time of year, it's 90, 95 degrees outside, you're going to be in full tunnel. If you've got old uh, old toms getting ready to sail you're, and you're trying to keep them as cool as possible, you want to make sure that you've got a good cooling system in place in order once your fans are all going and it's 90 plus degrees outside. So, uh, so an evaporative cooling system would be the best option for that. Uh, what this like this picture here, uh, what this allows you to do is the air to pass through the flutes, what I always call them, in the uh, pads there. And then that's a six inch recirculating pad, passes through there, therefore cooling the air as it passes through. And then the fans pull it down the house, therefore giving a nice cooling effect to the curtains. So, uh, and we also offer uh, foggers is also another option. Uh, besides evaporative cooling. So again, it kind of depends on what your scenario would be and, and uh, which, which application would fit you best. This is just a picture of a brand new, uh, one of our Polar Easy Cool systems there. And then uh, there's a brief uh, description of our, of, our, uh, of our fogging system that we have as well. So. Next, so we're talking about cooling. We've been focusing a lot on, you know, removing heat from the house, but now we're going to focus on keeping heat in the house during the wintertime. So uh, we have a couple different options on heaters. We have our tube heat and we have our radiant brooders, uh, both of which are very energy efficient in regard as far as comparing it to a forced air heater or your old pancake brooders if you're in a pulp type situation. Uh, so both of these are, are, uh, are great, are great uh, changes to that. Uh, so you're going to see not only are you going to see a more even heating distribution from both of these options, you're, you're also going to see uh, lower fuel costs because these are going these are built to retain the fuel. A couple of key things to point out about our about our tube heater there is that you see the airtight box. So that is there to allow. But obviously, inside Turkey House, it is going to be dusty. You want to keep that down. So that's that's one of the pluses about having. Uh, about having lower or having this box is to is to keep all the elements out. So that's uh, that's a plus there. It also comes in in different sizes. We offer a 20 foot tube. We also offer a 40 foot 40 foot tube and a 50 foot tube. Uh, so it, so it just depends on what. So again, what application that you uh, that you have there. And then uh, touching on brooders real quick again another radiant option we have uh, they're all zone controlled uh, typically you would have anywhere from four to six brooders in a zone it's all it all can be controlled by your by your controller uh, just like your brooder or just like your tube heaters can be um, and then we also offer a non-electric version of our radiant brooder if you had a, had a situation where you couldn't run electric to the house so that's the temperature part of it and the air quality part of it. Uh, one thing to add real quick, uh, you know, we do offer for a line of controllers that actually our Ventra line that uh, we can actually control multiple rooms or multiple houses uh, with one controller. So uh, that's something that uh, that if you enter, if you're in the market for a controller and you would like to take a look at uh, maybe some different features that our Ventra, our Ventra line offers, 
I would encourage you to get with your local dealership or a local Valco sales rep. So next we're going to move into talking about feeding and then talk about watering uh, here at the end before we wrap things up here. So uh, first we're going to look at the, you know, we got feed storage, we have our feed bins uh, that comes in different sizes, different tonnage. Uh, as you can see a picture there, uh, but uh, we've, uh, we will build that to whatever size house you have, obviously the size house and the size and the number of turkeys that you have in the house is going to determine what size bin that you would need. We also offer the augering system, the flex augering system that will take the feed from the bin inside the house. We offer different sizes. We offer uh, different volumes depending on what type of feed that you are running through there, running inside the uh, inside the system. And uh, and our most recent uh, most recent addition is the. 740 system down there at the bottom, which would be our uh, extra high volume option there to uh, to uh, run uh, run feed or run product inside of a barn. Uh, our PTF or our our adult uh, our adult turkey pan feeder. Uh, that's uh, we designed that to have great feed representation. You got the curved bowl there that's going to help reduce breast bruising. It gives you a good 360 degree look at the feed. It also uh, we have a little bit a little bit further distance between the shield and the pan just to allow for a feed presentation there for the turkeys uh, and so uh, and also it is capable of winching the feed level so that way you can adjust how high in that pan the feed level is and that is done from a winch that would be attached to to the feed line itself that could be adjusted by hand. Uh, here a couple months ago, we uh, released our two-piece turkey tower. So everybody who's been doing this long enough has had the scenario where a tractor or a loader bumped into a pan, bent it, now I got to replace it. Well, you had to pull the whole line and, and basically you know replace it from the end to wherever the pan was broken. Well, now what we've released is a two-piece tower that would allow you to, you see this U clip up here at the top, of the, uh, of the uh, tower there, you pop it off, and the top portion of the uh, cone or the uh, tower comes off, slide the bottom portion onto the tower after you, or onto the feed line after you've removed the old broken pan, and then you snap your, you slide your top piece of the tower back in, reinsert the clip, and you're good to go. Uh, so uh, this is something, like I said, we hit the market here a couple of months ago. So uh, again, if you have any further questions, I would uh, steer you towards your local Valco dealership for more information. Uh, for Pulps, we offer our Fuse uh, ProLine feeders. Uh, we have uh, this here in this picture. It's actually a little video I wanted to play while I talk, but uh, it's a, uh, this is our five spoke 14 inch feeder. So it, it, with the five spokes, you have a little bit uh, bigger gap there for the Pulps to get in and, and and to get out a lot easier, that way not uh, not getting caught. We also offer a 13 or 14 spoke feeder, depending on how how wide of a feeder that that, that you're after. So uh, it also offers. This is great from a cleaning out standpoint. It also offers a hinged. So if you see on this picture, look close. There's a couple of little yellow tabs. You pop those off. You pull down the green part of the pan. And it actually hinges so there where you can go through a pressure wash and get that good and clean before your next poles come back. Lastly, we're going to touch on them and the different systems that we offer there. You know, this uh, also got a little video. I wouldn't, I'll let it play while I talk, but it's, uh, you see here, this turkey's drinking out of our Big Tom cup drinker. So as you said, the pendulum there, uh, that he's hitting on as he's uh, drinking out of that system. The big thing about this one is, is that it can be used from day one of age all the way up to sale. So you've got, uh, so if you've got poults, you don't have to have different systems. You don't you can keep the same one all the way through. So that way, whenever you do move them out of the brooder house into the grow out house, you don't have that, you don't have that change in system that they have to, have to get used to. So that's, uh, it offers a 360 degree, uh, presence there for them to get water and for the pulps we offer a little green ball that you can put down inside the cup there that will help raise the water level and also give the pulps something to want to play with to help them get the, to help them uh, get to the water 
Uh, and there's uh, as far as the different uh, different turkeys per cup, you know, depending on if it's poults or hens or toms, we offer we have different different specifications there. So again, you want to get with your local dealership or, or Valco rep to to uh, get that planned out accordingly. And we also offer a our uh, Turkey Max Bell drinker. So just like our feeder there, you can see in this uh, in this picture that, that the bowl itself has that nice curved rib to help prevent breast bruising. Uh, also has stainless steel components there inside the shaft, so that's going to help make this cup last a lot longer. Um, and so it also can be easily attached to an existing Balco watering system. And if you also, if you want to, uh, if you were interested in taking a look at that, that's, that's a video, a quick video. It's also out there on the Valco uh, YouTube channel to take a look at. And generally, we try to say anywhere from 80 to 100 birds per drinker on this uh, bell drinker. So this is, uh, this concludes our webinar. I uh, certainly appreciate your time and appreciate your attention. Just a couple of things real quick before we open up for questions. Uh, I'd like to point out if you do have any questions that you would like to email us about in the future, I would encourage you to reach out to uh, marcom at valco.com. Uh, you can email all of your all of your questions there and that will get uh, sent to the proper sales rep. And then uh, also again, I've mentioned several times, but you also have our have our YouTube, our YouTube channel. Uh, there so it has all of our videos. We have tech support videos on there talking about all things turkey. We're talking about you know different controller options. So uh, so yeah, and and they're all very you know relatively short too. So it's not going to take up a lot of your time. So, uh, but but again, thank you all for your attention this morning. And uh, Kayla, I'll turn it over to you and see if we got any questions. Hi Trey. Uh, so we have a couple questions that came in. And the first one we'll start off with uh, was, would you recommend the two-piece tower for new construction or just for a retrofit? Well, I would say you could do, you could do both and I would recommend both. Um, and the reason why I say that for new construction is, is that you think about it, if you've got an old pan that's bent and you're trying to remove it, the way to remove it is with a grinder to grind that off and you run the risk of your slip and now you've sliced a, a slit into your feed tube. So if you had the two piece tower um, already there, all you had to do was just pop that U clip off and then drop the pan off and put the new one on. So it's gonna be a lot, a lot less time involved. So and, and time's money. So see I would I would recommend doing on both of those applications. Awesome, good response. Uh, the second question that we have is, I am interested in converting my old barn into something more modern, but I don't have any specs to go off of. Is Valco able to help me out? Great question. So I, I'm assuming this is probably a, a, a private uh, a private grower, which there's, there's a bunch of them out there. So yes, uh, as far as to answer your question, yes, Valco can help you. Uh, I would uh, reach out to your uh, local uh, dealership and local uh, Valco sales rep, and we can get uh, we can work through our application engineering department, and we can look at whatever application you have. You know, house size, uh, turkey numbers inside the house. Are you a poke? Are you a brooder house? Are you a grow out house? And we can uh, try to determine. Uh, you know, which, which, which setup is best for you. And then we can present you with some sales drawings uh, just to show you what, you know, what we're recommending. And then, uh, and then also, also uh, present you with, uh, with uh, the different uh, pricing through the dealership. So yes, yeah, so I would reach out to your local dealership, but to answer your question, yes, yes, we can help you with that. All right. Looks like we got another question here. Uh, can I convert one of my existing fans into a V fan. What was the question again, Kayla? It was breaking up when you when you were saying it. Can I convert one of my existing fans into a V fan? Oh, good question. Um, yes, in time you can. Uh, we are working to um, have a changeover kit for a for our 54 inch uh, hypermax fans 
And then uh, we're also going to release a 36 inch option uh, soon thereafter. So, uh, so yes, in time we are going to have have a retro a retrofit kit available for your existing Hypermax Valco. All right, does anybody else have anything else that they would like to ask Trey about right now? Well, again, I thank y'all for your time uh, and, uh, and I appreciate your business. And if you have any questions, again, reach out to Mark Holm at falco.com and uh, we'll, we'll be glad to help you. So I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend and, and uh, take care.